Now, I must admit, when I watched Bad Influence in 1993, I never envisaged that 25 years later I would still be watching it. But here I am! And this is Season 2, Episode 3, which first aired on the 23rd of September, 1993. Hiya, welcome to Bad Influence. This week, we're looking at some of the dream consoles, like the Neo Geo. Ah, oh, the Neo Geo. Good if you like fighting games. This week is Super Mario All-Stars on the SNES. Oh. Now be the first game I played on the Super Nintendo. World, creators of these guys. Amongst all my fan mail... Nice Doc Martens now. ...by A.T. Sanderson of Glasgow. <clears throat> there once was a guy called Nam who was a little spam. He never knew until he grew, which made him a bigger spam. There was always a kid at school who wore Doc Martens, wasn't there? Inspired, I've decided to do today's first... Always one. ...entirely in verse. The first cheat that I'm going to do is for the Amiga game Street Fighter 2. Put your cursor over Blanca... Then type in patience. At Wanker. A prank. Oh, sorry. Then select your favourite fighter and play the game until your energy. Look at that. That must be at least six frames per second. Ten. You'll never lose, even against Ken. Well, there it is. My first rhyming cheat. I think you'll agree. Although... Never miss the beat. Keep watching because I'll be back with more exciting cheats. From my shack. It's better than the Atari ST version. I'll give it that. Nam Rude, what a dude. You've seen the film, you've worn the book, you've read the t-shirt and you have eaten the game. And if you're not sick... Of I haven't done any of those things, if I'm honest. ...now, you will be by the end of the programme. This is the CD-ROM Dinosaurs, which runs on the PC. Ah, multimedia. But as well as words and pictures, you get... Look at that PC, it's got a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. ...beginning like a book or dipping where you like. And that's what I've done. Oh, is, that, is that a zip drive underneath it? I don't think it is. A dinosaur, let's find out. Dinosaurs were amazing creatures that lived during the mes, mes, Mesozoic era of violet. I can't say that word, so I can click it to get me more information about that strange word here. It tells you what it is. But best of all, it'll also tell you how to pronounce it. Mesozoic era. Yes. Mesozoic era. And now I won't embarrass myself in front of dinosaur experts. This voice I hate it when that happens. Because you can go on guided tours. There are loads to choose from, but we go for the Dinosaur Olympics. In basketball, when the Dino Dream Team steps onto the court, Michael Jordan doesn't stand. <laughs> What's up with this guy? And I've chosen this one because I hope that Manchester are going to win the Olympics later on. Keep your fingers crossed for that. As well as this, you can have a look at six different movies. It lets the sounds and animations speak for themselves. I've chosen the hunt because it's the most bloodthirsty, but it's not for the faint-hearted. No, it certainly isn't, is it? What I want to know is, how can they sample sounds from animals that died 65 million years ago? From dictaphones, obviously. Make your chips good on a treat, that, wouldn't it? Super Mario All-Stars is a combination of four classic Mario games which first appeared on the NES. They've been given a bit of spit and polish to bring them up to 16-bit standard and include the lost levels of Super Mario Brothers. Ah, Super it's Mario 2. His way around. If you're a Mario fan, then this one's really going to be for you. What they've done is they've reworked the graphics and the sound. Now, I don't think this uses all the SNES's capabilities, but that shouldn't worry you, is all the gameplay still there? It is a good collection. This is Super Mario Bros. 1. It was first released in 1987, and this set the standard for all the rest of the platform games. What I'm doing in here, I'm little Mario running along, got to do all the same things, leap on the turtles, knock them into the brown walking mushrooms. And if I look around, I can find mushrooms, they turn me into big Mario. What you can do is you can leap on all of them, and if I can find a star, I'll be invincible for the rest of the level. The Super Nintendo era is definitely my favourite Mario era. You can just plough through the game. It just worked so well on that console. Lost levels of Super Mario Brothers. You won't have seen these if you live outside Japan, because when they were first released, they were considered too hard for the European market. And this one requires some precision jumping. Let me tell you, these are a lot harder than they look. You've got to leap over these green things. <laughs> but they're always getting you. Oh, they got me. Unlucky, mate. There's four separate games included. I think that makes it great value. Even if you've already got Super Mario World, I think this complements it nicely. Mm. I will consider buying it, but only because it's got four games in one. I was always tempted. When this release, the Mario games were good. 
but they're flogging them to death by re-releasing now death. Oh, come on, mate. Mario's amazing. And so the final scores for Super Mario All-Stars, the girls gave it an average 3 out of 5. Oh, what? But the boys gave it an excellent 4. Yeah, I was always tempted to get a Super Nintendo the pack right, with but, Super Mario right, All-Stars. It looked so appealing. I'm really bored with this planet. <laughs> you are the chosen one, Luke. May the force be with you. Eat, eat, the spaceship has been overrun by Imperial Stormtroopers. <coughs> Use the force, Luke. <coughs> of course. It's not a bad reenactment, really. <laughs> and here's Pretty close. The Super Raiders of the Lost Ark on the SNES. When you get to the Sandman's level, after the second set of caves, you come to a straight piece of ground like this. All you have to do is fall off the cliff and press left, and you'll find an extra set of nine lines. I tell you what, I really like the Super Nintendo control pad. As many times as you like. Right, time for my next... Not really to hold, but just aesthetically. It just looks nice. have escaped! Okai the new haggis. I'm really sorry I built this island and invented all them dinosaurs the new. Mm. They used to say that hey, Z. never lies. Today, especially in movies, it lies all the time. And the best people in the world at making it lie. Are we even allowed to use Hollywood anymore? Without some sort of copyright problem? Just north of San Francisco. You can't even display that. Text company called Industrial Sign, can you? Something. I heard about that. Oh, Jurassic Park. The feature their handiwork is Jurassic Park. Absolutely. Jeff Goldbaum. The job of the special effects wizards is to produce scenes and characters that can't exist in real life. And let's face it, there aren't that many Tyrannosaurus Rexes around now. Oh, this is when this stupid girl flashes a light in the dinosaur's eye. Turn the light off. Why would you even do that? What, what, what's she even trying to this achieve from that? Magic starts. The art department. It's here that a director's rough ideas are turned into so hey, coloring department. Drawings. The ILM artists have worked on all the most successful the Ghostbusters too. The past few years, and they keep everything. This is a T2 book, and these are just some real rough illustrations that director Jim Cameron sent to us. You can kind of know what it is, but just barely. And then oh. our art director starts drawing based on that. So here's one of his. But in, but you can see it's still a mood drawing. That would still be something that's just trying. That to looks find awesome. Colors and I want feeling. the T1000 to the T1000 look like to look like that. Silver too. This is a, exactly. Kind of a, and then we move on to no, no, something that's more, more finished. Like it's still a mood piece, but it's sort of a fine. I love artwork like this. The artists also produce concept pictures for hardware. Oh, Recognize look at this. this. It's an early version of the Death Star from Star Wars. That is some nice 70s sci-fi. The concept gets agreed by the director. Look at that. Shop, get to work. Amazing. And the model has to be made in incredible detail. It always so surprised me how massive they were. Cinema screen, they look real. It's like the Star Trek Enterprise ship. It's huge, isn't it? I suppose to get the detail, you need to do that. The model makers here at Industrial Light and Magic can produce anything from dragons to dinosaurs. From spaceships to slimers, from buildings to brothers. They're a clever bunch, aren't they? Ah, oh, a child. You can buy those uh, canvases of that on eBay for like twenty quid. I'm tempted to have one on the wall. Ninety years ago, by the French filmmaker Georges Méliès. It looks crude now, but the audience then had absolutely no idea how this could be done. Special Looks like the Smashing Pumpkins music video. Changed until Industrial Light and Magic was set up nearly 20 years ago. Obviously, it's based on that. It's 1975. Producer George Lucas is about to embark on a project called Star Wars, and he needs to film some very special effects. He assembles a team of model makers, cameramen, and unusually computer experts who, between them, Yoda looks hammered. Entirely new way of shooting special effects. For the first time, they're using computers to control camera movements. Ooh, another five and a quarter inch floppy drive. This is what's called a motion control camera. They weren't very common over here in the UK. They move very precisely under computer control. It means that camera moves can be repeated time after time. Mainly because so we spaceships that you need for your battle can be filmed separately and combined later. Mostly adopted PCs after the three and a half inch drives came out. The movie, but here at ILM, is that a silicon graphics? Ahead. Workstation. Computers in an entirely different way to produce movie images. This really uh, came to the forefront with Terminator 2. 
where we had a completely synthetic model of Robert Patrick built for his role as the uh, T-1000 robot. That film, even today, it looks almost flawless, doesn't it? The computer, the programmers needed a real-life reference, so they felt-tipped actor Robert Patrick's body with a black grid and filmed him walking, running, and standing. I watched some clips of the HD, uh, not not remake, the update the other day, and they look, it looks perfect. Produces body movements. One of the problems with this new technique was that the model experts at ILM who know how to make a dinosaur move convincingly weren't computer experts. They were used to hands-on work, and that's where the DIDs came in. I love how they can, the, uh, fl- the so they can move so fluidly. The, uh, yeah, look at that. Dinosaur input device that we use to make some of the scenes in Jurassic Park, some of the animations. And what it is is a uh, conventional stop-motion animation armature that's uh, articulated using these hinge joints. We've moved to CGI now, but it's, it's a shame that we've... I mean, we're losing all this... ...coder that will allow each this skill. Because this is amazing stuff. ...skeleton to be transferred down these wires and goes into the computer and, you know, memorize. And this is... I find it so much more interesting than CGI. You know, little tiny infinitesimal movements. And then we'll use the computer to edit all the moves and smooth them out and, and refine the performance of the, of the character. Of course, CGI is awesome, but... One thing's for sure, in the movies at least, you just can't believe your eyes. Oh, and a competition to finish with. From which movie is this the last scene? Die Hard 2. The special effects wizards filled in the blank spaces with real-life actors and vehicles. So, in the film, they were real, but that wasn't. But what film was it? Well, here's another clue. It was on telly last week. Oh, and it starred Bruce Willis. Prize details at the end of the programme, but now it's time for this week's news and previews. Here's a red-hot new game for the Amiga and PC, Inferno. You can visit Whoa. seven planets and three moons, viewing them from deep space or interacting close-up in great detail. Look out for it in early 94. Well, I, I can't there remember that game. It looks awesome. Joysticks for the Mega Drive and the SNES. Both Mega Master 6 feature arcade-style buttons and slow motion, auto-fire, turbo speed and volume control. The most eagerly awaited game for software-hungry Mega CD fans is Sylphide. The game features massive polygon-based background sprites like those seen in Star Wing. They rotate and change in size as they shoot towards you. Sylphide hits the shop in November. That did work quite well, that game. For some more games reviews. Even though it was just like a, a video running in the background. Poor old Frankie's having a bit of bother with the electricity board. He's run up a huge bill and he can't pay it. So the search is on to find Dr. Frankenbone's lolly. Here's Amanda. Those Game Boy sound effects. It's a very big maze game, but it's also a shoot up as well. Here you can see the bailiff. He's knocking at the door frantically, but he can't get me. So I've got to find the key so I can shoot out the back door. I picked up my Game Boy the other day. It's different to the first game. as there are so, so hard to see the screen. Here I am in the forest. Every time you come back to the forest, it may be slightly different, like there may be coins in the trees. That was half the game. Sat down below. Half the game was finding a There's spot where you man. could see the screen. He doesn't do anything, so you just go past him. Oh, right, okay. Really thanks thanks for pointing the old man out, then. And I think it'll keep you interested for quite some time. This is a great improvement on the first one. It's got faster and slicker graphics. I think this is a great game for the Game Boy. He's so jolly, that chap. It quite interesting, but I wasn't sure where I was going. I looked at the demonstration and that helped me where I was supposed to go. Good. And the scores for Dr. Franken 2, the girls liked it and gave it 4 out of 5, but the boys disagreed. They only gave it an average score, 3 out of 5. I need to get into some more, more Game Boy games. It's such a big library. Oh, I love this game. ...family gets his own back by frightening them out of their wits and their house. I rented this from Ritz Video one day, completed it in one day. In like a few hours, so easy. Get rid of a ghost. But in this game, you're the ghost trying to get rid of the person. But it's so enjoyable. The game in the cellar having to collect the green e- ecto gunge, which helps you go up to the next part of the level. This bit wasn't as enjoyable. The bit in the house. This is the map. It shows me where the people I, are. That ma- I love. I, I love maps, and oh. the whole aspect of this game just appealed. Things to him. I can either cast a spell or jump into something. Oh, I'm going to jump into this cupboard. Ah, oh, I've come out as a ghost. Different objects do different things, and this is quite a good one. So you could just follow the same family member. And his face will come up, and the more he gets terrified, the more he, the more guns you'll give me when he runs out of the room. From room to room. It's a great game, but you have to give it a while to get into it. And just keep scaring them. It's a bit too easy. Until they leave. It's a nice idea, and the screen is 3D, but everything else about the game is very basic. If you go and pick on different people, then it's a bit harder. It's just 
an average game with jerky graphics. Look, what, watch what you're saying, Sunshine. An unspectacular three out of five, and the boys thought it was average too. Jerky graphics, three out of five. Out of five. That is a five out of five star game, people. And now, Bad Influence is proud to present the very rich person's guide to luxury games consoles. We have assembled here in the studio what you might call the uh, Royces of the games console. Oh, God, look at all that. Interestingly, though, there's an FM Towns. New. In fact, this bit of kit from Japan is over three years old. It's called the FM Towns, and it's never been released in this country. British software manufacturers, though, do make games for it. It runs on the usual computer software, but the best games come on CD. And what you're seeing now is a worldwide preview for us here on Bad Influence. A first ever look at Scavenger 4. This is the CD console version of the FM Towns. They've taken away the keyboard. I would have been so excited to have been in that room. And not just because Violet's there. All those consoles. ship through the human body. One of the consoles you can get in this country is this one, the PC Engine. In Japan, this is more popular than the Mega Drive, even though it's only an 8-bit machine. It packs six-channel stereo sound, excellent graphics, and when it was launched in 1988, it really took off, primarily because the software, which comes on little cards like this, including flawless copies of some arcade... I do love those little cards. Or this one, Magical Chase. Chase HQ is quite good on that as well. ...versions of the PC Engine in various shapes and sizes. This is a top-of-the-range model, the PC Engine Turbo Duo. Software comes on CD-ROM as well as the usual cards. We just get that out. Pull it. Do something else because this is the PC Engine GT. Yes. The color portable version. It shares many of the same features. Look how bulky that is. It's amazing. It's using the same cards, which makes it the only portable in the world on which you can play. Ah, oh, I love it. At the top end of the scale is this: the Neo Geo. The most powerful games console in the universe. The cartridges for that thing were so huge. For your bedroom. Software includes all the arcade favourites. This has just been released and I've been playing it all day. It's called Viewpoint. Sadly, the Neo Geo is only available on import, but electrical shop... Costs about a million pounds. ...might be able to rent it for you. Oh, great. And when you get bored with your bedroom, you can save your game on a memory card, take the memory card out, go down the local arcade, slot it into a coin-op, and continue your game from where you left off. Yeah. Um, got 50p, Andy. That was never really going to happen, was it? And finally, this is the first working 3DO machine in wow. Britain. Wow. 3DO is one of the new generation of games machines. This game is called Motor Madness. Yeah, it's not the best game the to will be in this show it off. It's April. Ha <laughs> Here's three hilarious practical jokes that you can play on your friends. Or in my case, now, Andy and Violet. You've been in a lot of this episode. <laughs> that you'd really, really like an autographed photograph of him. <laughs> I would. Number two, tell Violet Berlin that her hair's got a funny colour. <laughs> Shut it. Number three, wait till they're playing Dragon's Fury on the Mega Drive, then quickly distract them and type in L I B Y F W J I D three. Then as soon as they start the game, they'll get a score of, uh, well, lots of nines and uh, two noughts. But the best bit is, when they blast the ball back into play, they'll go straight to the final stage, making the game completely useless and a total waste of time. That does suck the fun out of it a bit, doesn't it? You could uh, rewire their Mega Drive so when they press button C, it blows up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> because that... Would be a good that idea. looks like my room at the moment. Oh. It's very similar. The explosive Namru there. If you want to record the data blast, set your video recorders now. Will do. This week's competition prize was an Amiga 1200. Oh, a what a prize. The game Air Warrior and the fashion accessory for the 90s, the Bad Influence t-shirt. The competition question was, who played the ace pilot in the film Top Gun? The answer, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise -shank. Congratulations to Nazir Shiraz from Cardiff. Well done, Nazir. The competition prize is to win a Neo Lucky Geo devil. Games. And the question is the same one that was set by Z Wright earlier. From which film is this the last scene? Phone in your answers on 089. Airport. Airplane. Calls will cost no more than 25p, but make sure you get permission first from whoever pays the phone bill. Lines close at midnight on Monday. No one ever gets permission. That's unfortunately, is all we have time for today. So see you next week. Ta-ra. Bye. Bye-bye. My go now. Come on, it's my go now. Come on. There we go, another episode of Bad Influence. Lovely jubbly. Here's the data blast. Lots of things, pictures, blah de blah. No, no pictures, I'm talking rubbish. There might be some pictures. Oh, I'm gonna go through that and look at the charts in a minute. 
Right, um, that's the end. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>